Every individual athlete you might call the greatest leaves in their wake a gaggle of also-rans. Tiger Woods claims plenty such victims, golfers who would have won more major titles, earned more money, and spent more time atop the world rankings if not for one man dominating an era roughly encompassing the 2000s plus a few years before and after. Here are some of the biggest names in that group who all have something important in common. Because they are older than Tiger and or because they got hot at the right moments, each of these greats counts among those golfers who won major titles during Woods' era of unprecedented excellence. Nobody was better than Tiger in his prime, but at least some guys got to take something with them. Sergio Garcia is and will forever be a different story. Younger, less victorious, exceptionally irritable, and exceptionally irritating. More so than any of those other golfers, Garcia's promising golf career got buried under that of Tiger Woods. That indignity fermented into hot, stinky beef. Our story begins in 1999, when Spanish prodigy Sergio Garcia joined the PGA Tour at just 19 years old. Tiger Woods had turned pro only three years prior, but he was already hot shit, already the youngest player ever to win the Masters in 1997, already the fastest ever to achieve a number one PGA Tour ranking. After kind of a quiet stretch following his blazing debut, Tiger entered the final round of the 99 PGA Championship poised to win his second major, tied for the lead to open the Sunday session in Medina, Illinois. The group nipping at Tiger's heels included none other than that brand new teenager. Garcia played an exceptional first round and recovered from an iffy second round to pull within two strokes of the lead at the conclusion of play Saturday. Near the end of the final round, the two youngsters stood well ahead of the pack. And after birdieing the 13th hole, Garcia glared back toward Tiger standing at the tee. It was on with Garcia trailing Woods by just one stroke. On 16, Garcia needed a miracle to stay within striking distance of Woods. Sergio was in a pickle, which is to say, behind a tree. But with this genuine no-look shot, Garcia saved himself to make par and leapt into the air watching his Hail Mary find the green. Oh my goodness, he hit it on the green. These were big, brash moments for the kid, stealing the spotlight from golf's new superstar. Could Sergio steal a victory as well? Nope. Tiger held on to win his first PGA Championship and second career major. Short of the stunning victory, Sergio was left to answer for his antics, which Tiger reportedly did not enjoy. Defending his stare down on 13, Garcia said he wasn't trying to do anything bad, he wasn't wishing ill on Tiger, he was just issuing a challenge. And he took the opportunity to issue another. Looking ahead to the following month's Ryder Cup, which pits the best American golfers against the best of Europe, Garcia said simply, I want to play Tiger. Garcia identified, correctly, that Tiger wasn't quite the same force in a group context, whereas Sergio would go on to distinguish himself in team events. And while the U.S. took home the 99 Ryder Cup trophy, Garcia did outplay Woods in the Friday morning foursomes. A nice little rivalry was forming. Sergio represented a plucky but friendly challenger to the throne of golf's next big star. A clip from around this era shows both guys playing with the tension in the air. Tiger playfully treating Sergio like a huge celebrity, Sergio returning the favor by asking a peer to sign his hat. As it happened, Tiger's agency, IMG, had just cooked up a perfect showcase for this new rivalry. Monday Night Golf, a series of nationally televised match play events pitting Tiger against a challenger, with cash prizes and charitable donations at stake. Garcia made an obvious challenger for the second such event, and both parties agreed to face off on August 28, 2000 in Palm Desert, California. It was dubbed the Battle at Bighorn, with nothing at stake but cash, pride, and attention. 
Now, even though this whole thing was arranged and approved by Tiger and his people, it wasn't necessarily front of mind for the star. At the time, Tiger was on a monumental streak, three consecutive major victories dating back to that 99 PGA Championship. And he'd won a tournament in Ohio literally the night before the battle at Bighorn. And Woods was not only focused on and exhausted from those more meaningful events, but suffering flu-like symptoms. Match play for charity just wasn't his priority. The dude was busy making history, and he felt like shit. Well, the 20-year-old Sergio Garcia beat Woods straight up, head-to-head, -head, on ABC primetime. Tiger was courteous in the moment, but reportedly annoyed at Sergio's enthusiastic celebrations. This doesn't look egregious to my eye, but people who know golf better than I do seem to side with Tiger, especially given the context of a silly made-for-TV exhibition. Anyway, Woods had more important stuff to worry about, like winning a fourth straight major, the 01 Masters, to cement the so-called Tiger Slam, and then winning a seventh major title at the 02 Masters. While Woods planted his flag ever deeper, Sergio continued to fall short and continued to receive more attention for his antics than his play, complaining and making a scene on the course. All of this came to a head at the 2002 US Open at Bethpage Black in New York. Woods was leading the pack and enjoying the favor of the fans, while Garcia, the best performing non-American player, got fed up with what he perceived as special treatment for the favorite. Specifically, Tiger had played through some light rain during the Friday morning session, while Sergio, playing later in the day, had to battle much wetter and windier conditions. It's not that Garcia expected Mother Nature to play fair, but he believed tournament officials would have suspended play if Tiger was the one on the course for that blustery afternoon. Sergio complaining made for a boisterous weekend, with rowdy crowds heckling Garcia, including during a Sunday morning session in which he was paired with Tiger. It got annoying enough that Sergio actually left a note of apology in Tiger's locker before that final round. Amid all the excitement, Woods pulled away to win his eighth major, although not without some shaky moments. After the fact, the second place finishing Garcia said Tiger showed he was human, and looked ahead to a day when he might be able to seize those chances and become US Open champion. That day would not come, at least not while Tiger was involved. There were chances, though. A few of those guys I mentioned at the top claimed majors during this era because Tiger hit a drought through 2003 and 2004. Sergio spent that stretch rebuilding his swing and dreaming aloud about getting another shot to play in a final group with Tiger, but it didn't pan out the way he wanted. This was the period when tip-top Sergio could have claimed some big, meaningful victories, more than just the made-for-TV stuff. Instead, Garcia either fell short or whiffed entirely in major events, and the rivalry lost steam. Before long, Tiger got back in a groove, back to number one on Earth. In 2005, he won his fourth Masters, and then a couple months later, his 10th major, the 05 British Open. One year later, Tiger was at Royal Liverpool looking to defend that title and he entered the final round with a trio of golfers, including Garcia, trailing him by just a stroke. Here, at last, was another chance for Sergio to snatch a major victory away from the world's greatest, and right in front of him too. They were paired together for the final round. On the morning of the potential biggest day of his career, Garcia showed up wearing this. Dressed like a peep from head to toe, Sergio delivered his worst round of the Open. Tiger cruised to victory over Garcia and the rest of them, and then, in a private text message to a friend reported later, issued one of the first real signs that he took special pleasure in beating Garcia, the guy who'd annoyed him years prior. Quote, I just bludgeoned Tweety Bird. Garcia reverted to his usual, well, see you at the Ryder Cup tack, and, as usual, held the upper hand in that context, but that's hardly consolation for squandering another major head-to-head -head opportunity while dressed fully in butter yellow. And so it remained. 
Over the next couple years, Tiger kept racking up majors, while Sergio claimed nary a chance to steal one at his expense, wasted opportunities to win one at all, and stewed. The two played together at the Bridgestone Invitational in 2009, and Garcia couldn't resist the chance to give Woods a backhanded compliment. Tiger, of course, went on to win that tournament, and then issued a searingly plain summary of Garcia's career. You'd have thought he'd have a major win by now. He had his chances. That pattern, Garcia prodding as the chasm between them widened, and Woods kinda dismissing Garcia's entire existence, is the tone of this relationship for like 10 years. There were whispers that somewhere in there, behind closed doors, the two men got into it, maybe even almost fought each other. Longtime Woods caddy and noted beefer Steve Williams carefully mentioned that Sergio and Tiger, quote, have had words. But if so, it was all beneath the surface. The golf world smelled beef. They heard the faint squish of beef, but they hadn't really seen it. Not on the course and hardly off of it. But then, in May of 2013, Woods and Garcia were paired together for the third round at Sawgrass. On the second hole, Garcia hit a shot he didn't like and immediately reacted as if someone else was to blame. Reporters noted an even icier atmosphere than usual as the round proceeded. Later on, interviewed during a weather delay, Garcia pointed a finger. He didn't see that I was ready, uh, but you, you do have a feel when the other guy is going to hit. And right as I was on top of the backswing, uh, I think he must have he pulled like a five wood or a three wood out of the rough, and obviously everybody started screaming, so that didn't help very much. To be clear, Sergio is arguing that at the exact moment he took his backswing, Tiger, standing not too far away, selected a club from his bag, thus provoking a reaction from the crowd following him. Garcia said Woods should have known better than to create such a distraction. Apprised of this accusation, Tiger explained his actions and called Sergio a whiner. The marshals, are, they told me he already hit. So I, I pulled the club and um, was getting ready to play my shot. And then uh, I hear his comments afterwards and not real surprising that he's complaining about something. Sergio suggested golfers were responsible for handling their home fans, especially Tiger. It happens to me when, when I'm in Spain, you know, you obviously it happens to him everywhere he goes. He gets a lot of people following and I think you have to be very careful because there's another guy playing and, you know, sometimes you, you have to pay attention to what's going on because, you know, if the other guy's hitting and you, and you do something when you're in the crowd, the crowd is going to respond and, you know, it's going to affect the other player. And then he sort of implied that Tiger was lying. At least uh, I'm true to myself. You know, I, I know what I know what I'm doing, and uh, you know he uh, he can do whatever he wants. The course marshals split on whether Tiger was innocent, and you better believe fans zaprooted the hell out of that TV footage. But more important for our purposes was a beef now in the open. Garcia went on record saying he didn't really like Tiger and didn't enjoy playing with him. Woods won at Sawgrass, but reporters kept harping on that third round for weeks to come, which produced one of the best one-word answers of all time. Has there ever been any thought of just contacting him and just saying, hey, let's chill, we don't need to be going back and forth like this anymore? No. <laughs> so there was beef, but Tiger didn't really want to talk about it. Responding from Europe, Garcia had a lot more to say. Yeah, I am a whiner, but Tiger doesn't tell the truth. Sergio admitted he and Tiger had been enemies for some time. And here it came back to Tiger's reputation and status. Just because Woods was the best and most beloved golfer didn't mean Garcia would go with the crowd and just defer. Tiger might beat Sergio, but he wasn't going to step on Sergio. The only thing these two agreed on was that they did not need to talk and squash the beef. He doesn't need me in his life, I don't need him in mine, and... You know, let's move on and let's keep doing what we do. Sergio would continue to find Tiger cold, pompous, and dishonest. Woods would continue to regard Garcia as whiny and annoying. But soon thereafter, Tiger caught wind of something else Garcia had said during this press availability. When he was asked, jokingly, if he'd invite Woods to dinner during the U.S. Open, Garcia responded with a joke of his own. One that not only included an obvious racist stereotype, but evoked Fuzzy Zeller's hideously bigoted comments from early in Woods' career. 
Garcia apologized almost immediately. It was a silly remark. He didn't mean to be racist. It was stupid. He was sorry. On Twitter, Tiger let Sergio know it was not just a joke. He acknowledged Sergio's remorse, and he insisted that everyone please just move on from that nonsense at the Players' Championship. And honestly, that may have been the end of the public beef. Garcia's needling had always been the driving force. Chastened, perhaps, by taking it way too far, he tempered his public complaints about Tiger. Ever since, the two have kept a polite and even respectful distance. Garcia never won big during Tiger's prime, but he finally claimed his first major at the 2017 Masters. Woods missed that event because of back issues, but from afar offered his congratulations with typical brevity. When Tiger made his stunning comeback from back surgeries to win the 2019 Masters, Sergio, who missed the cut, returned the favor with typical discursion. I think this beef is over. Sergio Garcia once seemed like a genuine challenger to Tiger Woods. He came out of the gates with the potential to rival number one, perhaps even equal him. Instead, the 99 PGA Championship was just about the closest Garcia ever got. Sergio sometimes stole the spotlight, but never a trophy, and his perpetual, ever-widening second-tier status fueled an unrelenting urge to prod number one, to stoke beef in lieu of a real rivalry. But Sergio pushed and pushed until he pushed Tiger, and common decency, too far. And ever since, it appears he learned to just shut up and accept reality. Now, they hardly have to talk to or about one another, which is surely best for all involved. Thank you for watching this episode of Beef History. There's a lot more where that came from.